Hello everyone. So today in this video, we are going to discuss a question of surgery that was asked in the Ames May 2018 exam. This is the 11th question that I'm going to discuss with you today and it's a 10th video. And the question that was asked in the Ames May 2018 exam in surgery was this. It goes as follows that grade 3 hemorrhage is described as a blood loss of and the options were more than 2 litre, 1500 to 2000 ml or 1.5 litre to 2 litre, uh, 500 to 1500 uh, milliliters or more than 3 litres. So before discussing the answer to this question, let's discuss an even more important topic or topics. So there's a trend in the recent exam, especially for in case of AIMS, that AIMS has started to focus a lot on emergencies. It has ditched the traditional medicine and surgery and has started to focus on emergencies. In this scenario, topics such as trauma, cardiac arrest, myocardial infarction, stroke, loss of consciousness, basic life support, Glasgow Coma Scale, airway management, and the fluid therapy for trauma and blood transfusion for uh, blood loss, all these topics assume extremely important extreme importance the past three papers that is the aims mid 2017 to the aims mid 2018 there has been a question at least one or two questions from each of these topic especially from the glasgow comma scale and especially from trauma in the aims november 2017 almost the entire surgery came from trauma management itself hence it becomes extremely important to do atls and acls the advanced trauma life support and advanced cardiac life support and for medical emergency i would advise you to read the washington manual of critical care it describes the emergencies in a lucid manner with flow, the help of flow charts and diagrams so let's begin the discussion for this question now the question was essentially about what grade of hemorrhage is and so it's basically asking us about shock now shock is a state of low blood perfusion to tissues resulting in cellular injury and inadequate tissue function. What this essentially means to say that in a normally functioning tissue, there's a blood that's coming, this is a cell and that's a blood and the heart pumps the blood. Now in this scenario, one, two and three, three things can occur. That the blood flow stops, the blood itself decreases and the heart stop, stops pumping the blood. In all these three scenarios, that the perfusion, that the blood that was going to the tissue decreases. And when the blood along with its oxygen and nutrients to the cell decreases, there's inadequate tissue function. And this ultimately leads to cell and tissue death. In case of a trauma, hemorrhage, that is bleeding out, is the most important cause of shock. There's essentially no blood in the body to pump to the tissues and that's the main cause of shock. And in case of a trauma patient, hemorrhage is the most common cause of shock and it's extremely important to assume a person to be hemorrhagic shock until proven otherwise whenever they, they are cold to touch and tachycardic. So what happens is since there is an immense blood loss, the body tries to compensate. And how does it compensate? In, in compens tries to compensate by increasing the heart rate to increase the tissue perfusion in the limited amount of blood that is present. Despite that, the, since the amount of blood is less, the extremities will get less blood. Since they will get less blood, they will be cold because the warm blood is not reaching those extremities and they'll be cool to touch. So any injured patient, any trauma patient who's cool and tachycardic is, proven, is considered to be in shock, especially hemorrhagic shock until and unless it's proven to be otherwise. Now let's discuss the question and the topic. This is a table that I've taken from ATLS, 10th edition, and I'll advise every postgraduate medical entrance exam aspirant to read ATLS, especially if they're preparing for the AIMS entrance examination. Many questions have been trained from the single table, and let's discuss the table. So what this table has essentially done and what has essentially been done in ATLS is that they have classified the hemorrhagic shock depending upon the amount of blood loss. This amount of blood losses can be in the form of percentages and the normal uh, human blood volume is considered to be 5 liters. In case of a class 1 hemorrhagic shock, the blood loss is less than 15% or less than 750 ml. 
case 2 or in case of a mild hemorrhagic shock or class 2 hemorrhagic shock, the blood loss is 15 to 13 percent or in that scenario 750 to 1500 ml. In case of moderate, it increases from 1500 to 2000, while in case of massive or severe hemorrhagic shock, it's more than 40 percent or more than 2 liter of blood loss from the five normal 5 liter blood volume that's present in a normal 70 kg human being. Now what's important to know in this table is that how well the body actually compensates. Even in case of approximately up to 30% of the blood loss, there is no decrease in pressure. The blood pressure in case of class 1 and class 2 of hemorrhagic shock remains exactly the same. There is no decrease in the blood pressure. All the pulse pressure starts to decrease whenever the blood loss exceeds 15%. In the blood pressure is remarkably constant till the blood loss hasn't decreased 30%. So when a patient comes to you and he it's a trauma patient, you can obviously see the hemorrhage and there is no blood pressure decrease. Do not assume that there is no shock. He might be in class 1 shock and if you don't give appropriate fluid therapy, he might worsen and progress to class 3 or class 4 of the hemorrhagic shock. Because the blood pressure can be maintained remarkably by the body in a normal range, even up to 30% of the blood loss, blood loss volume. Now, what the blood is essentially required for tissue function. And we assess this tissue function in various parts of the body and then classify the hemorrhagic shock. So it's required for kidney function. It's just required for brain and it's required for the rest of the body. And how do we assess that? We assess the kidney function in a patient by the urine output. Again, as you can see, in case up to 30% blood loss, there is no decrease in urine output. The urine output starts to decrease only when the blood loss starts to exceed 30%. Similarly, in case of brain, which is assessed using the Glasgow comma scale, Remember, classical comma scale is an important topic in itself. The classical comma scale does not decrease that the person does not lose consciousness. The person doesn't have obtentation and doesn't go into coma until and unless the blood loss is more than 30% of the blood volume. And, and the rest of the body function is assessed using something known as the base deficit or the base axis. Now, what essentially happens is that if the blood to a tissue this stops now what will happen let me draw it here since there is decreased blood the amount of oxygen recreating the tissue will also decrease and since the amount reaching the oxygen reaching the tissue will also decrease there will be a shift to anaerobic metabolism and this anaerobic metabolism will result in formation of lactate as you know, in anaerobic metabolism, glycolysis takes place and glycolysis and the pyruvate that is formed in glycolysis gets converted to lactate in the absence of oxygen. So lactate is an acid and when lactate increases in the body, this will result in metabolic acidosis. So a person who has blood loss will can go into metabolic acidosis because, because of this increase in lactate because of the decreased tissue profusion and the switch over to anaerobic metabolism. And this lactate will in turn decrease the bicarb that's present in the body. And hence there will be something known as the base, this bicarb deficit. And this base deficit can be 0 to 2 milliequivalent in case of class 1, can be 2 to 6, 6 to 10 or more than 10. This base deficit is a new addition in this classification of hemorrhagic shock and the various parameters used in the new 10th edition of the Advanced Trauma Life Support Guidelines. And hence, it's a potential question in the future examination. So it's very important to know. Other parameters that we can see is the respiratory rate. As you can again see in case of respiratory rate, till the time the blood loss hasn't decreased, increased to up to 30%, the respiratory rate remains remarkably constant. And after that, since there is an increased lactate and there is metabolic acidosis the respiratory rate increases the try 
the respiration by increasing the rate of respiration we try to do something known as a co2 washout and hence decrease the blood ph and this again also starts when the hemorrhage is more than 30 percent so what i'm essentially trying to say and what i'm trying to emphasize is that a person who has blood loss their body does remarkably to compensate so even if the blood pressure is normal even if the respiratory rate seems to be normal and even if the urine output seems to be normal and the glasgow comma scale is also normal the only thing that might be decreased is a pulse pressure and you should never underestimate the hemorrhage in a patient and you should treat every trauma patient carefully monitor them carefully now questions that can be asked from that table are that the bp first starts to fall when the blood loss is approximately as i told you the body compensates remarkably until the time it's in stage 3 or the class 3 of shock that is more than 30 percent blood loss has occurred the bp doesn't start to decrease 30 percent of 5 liter is 1500 ml and that will be the correct answer of this question this is a question that has been asked in a previous aims examination now this is a potential new question that i'm going to discuss with you which, which of the following can be used to grade shock into various classes according to the new trauma guidelines and the answer to this question will be based if it's as i told you earlier now bicarbonate as you all know can also decrease because of the increased lactate but it's not used to create shock bicarbonate alone is not used to create shock and pco2 and pco2 do not have any importance now let's discuss the answer to the question the question simply asks it's a, a simple fact-based question that the grade 3 hemorrhage is described as a blood loss of and the answer will be grade 3 is when the blood loss is more than 30 percent and it's 32 40 percent and 30 to 40 percent of 5 liter is 1500 to 200 ml and that would be the answer here thank you for listening to this video and watching this video and have a nice day so hi hello everyone uh, my name is Aditya Gupta and I secured rank 17 in the AIMS May 2018 exam and uh, I'll be discussing one question every day and uh, I hope you guys enjoy the video that I just made and subscribe to my channel if you want more such videos I'll be posting one question every day of the AIMS May 2018 exam and discussing the related topics. Please share the video, subscribe to the channel and listen to more such videos for of the AIMS May 2018 exam. Thank you and have a nice day.